Hello and welcome back to the Trademark Sports Podcast for Round Zero. Rugby League football starts. I'm recording this on the Wednesday. We are four days away, three sleeps away from Rugby League. Can you believe it? I'm so excited. So stoked. There's so many like things we don't know about what's going to happen for Round Zero over in Vegas for the first time in NRL history. How's the game going to go on that smaller field? Who's going to stand up? Who's going to get the first wins of the season? So much to be explored. But... There's also been so much NRL news because that's just the way rugby league works. A week's a long time rugby league, so we've got some little news articles and that sort of thing, some things that cover and give my opinion and thoughts on, and then we will talk about the Vegas games, some of the team lists and stuff, some interesting selections, as well as getting to my tips, what I think is going to happen, and uh, that sort of thing, and before getting into your questions. So, basically, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. NRL news for the week, the, sh- uh, the Cronulla Sharks have brand new captains in Cameron McInnes and Dale Finucane. So Dale Finucane was always the co-captain alongside Wade Graham, and then obviously with Wade Graham's retirement, uh, he's not captain anymore. So they looked for another new co-captain. And the obvious choice, I guess, was Nico Hines. But in saying that, Cameron McInnes does like lead through his actions so much. He was captain at the Dragons for a while there. Um, and look, if you listen to... If you're an enjoyer of rugby league guru content, you'll hear him talk at a nauseam about how he should be playing Origin. He's just that kind of player with that grit and determination and will do anything for the team. And we saw him make, what, 81, 83 tackles? Either one of those last season against Penrith. Certainly not a mean feat against anyone, let alone the best team we potentially could have ever seen. So, yeah, he's definitely uh, captain material. And I think it's great. And also, like, Nico Hines has enough pressure on him anyway in that Cronulla Sharks team. So if you give him the captaincy and it just might be too much and people think, oh, it's just the captaincy is a small thing, but it's not. It's just that extra little thing to think about and worry about and try and like enhance your game and like you feel like you got to step up to certain things. Like some people honestly just aren't built to be a captain. I'm not saying that Nico Hines isn't and that he won't be that in the future, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, so yeah, McInnes and Finucane, captains for the Sharks, I think that's well, really well done from uh, Craig Fitzgibbon and the Sharks coaching team. Now, some interesting news. The NRL is looking to make a play to buy the Super League. They're just going to see if it's financially viable first, run the numbers, run the books over it, and we know that Peter Valandis is a numbers and money man. So, some of the, the things I've heard surrounding this is like, so it'll make it so that like it, it's all under one governing body and players will be able to switch clubs like mid-year and that sort of thing. So, basically... I mean, because we know that England is uh, half across the world, the seasons um, don't match up, if anything, they're actually the exact opposite. So, rugby league, a winter sport, you could play all year round, essentially, um, which takes the cricket T20 mould a little bit. However, and like, I get it. Like, people go, oh, why would you want to do that? If you're a player and you can get a million dollar contract in England and then a million dollar contract in Australia, get two million bucks a year. Why wouldn't you do it? Uh, especially because rugby league, it's not a uh, full-time career. Well, it's a full-time career, but it's not a... Uh, you work from 18 to 65 kind of career, unless you're lucky and you get into a co- um, coaching or commentary media job. But yeah, essentially, like it's sort of going to, to increase the monetization of players um, for the short period of time they have their careers. And I, I get that, but... It's also rugby league, which is so physically demanding on the body. You do need the off season, and the off season getting shorter and shorter anyway. I'm actually a little bit concerned about injury risk for this season. A lot of players haven't had enough time. I feel like to rest their body, especially with the Pacific Championships at the end of last season, which is good. I like international rugby league, but again, it's not giving those players the time to rest. Um, there's also like, I mean, it's an idea that one of my friends actually was talking about the other day, and that's like a international champions league type vibe thing so you could have a, i'm not sure when you'd organize it when you'd have it but like the top four or the teams that made the prelim from the super league and the teams that made the prelim from the nrl playing like a little mini tournament and having a champions league type um f- like format for a tournament i um, think it'd be pretty cool to see and like you could incorporate some other um, countries and stuff because it, it sounds like the NRL are going to depending how Vegas and stuff goes first I I feel like they're going to um, make a professional competition in the uh, in the United well in America uh, so I think it's, they're aiming to start with like a 12 team comp over there which I think is cool I don't know what the um, the market really is for rugby league I guess we'll see that over this coming weekend whether because like, I feel like 
there might be 100,000 Australian players, Australian players, Australian people pack into All Giant Stadium. But yeah, we'll see what the market's like for that and like how viable that is because, geez, there's a lot of athletes over there that uh, could definitely rip and tear in the NRL if they got the nuances of the game. Another interesting thing that I saw, and I mean, Nick Politis uh, has, his, has, his, has his ways with rugby league sometimes, um, but he is calling for a conference system. And I think that would actually be quite good for the NRL. But so he's proposing nine Sydney teams. Um, so, you know, you've got your Dragons, Sharks, Tigers, Manly, Eels, Penrith, Bulldogs, Roosters, Rabbitohs. So they're your nine teams. I, hopefully I didn't double up anyone and forget anyone there. Um, and then the other nine teams, like out of Sydney, teams would be uh, making up the other conference. So you'd be bringing in like a Perth Bears, essentially or a Papua New Guinea team or wherever because I think we're all in agreement that the next team is not going to be within New South Wales. So, that way you would uh, play every team in your conference twice and then all other teams um, once which gives you a 25 round season. Now, on paper, I do really like this. I think it bit make the game exciting and that sort of thing. Um, I think it creates really intense rivalries. Um, I also think it's better for crowds which is something that uh, Nick Pilates said but you do have to consider how much travel the out of New South Wales or out of Sydney teams have to do in comparison to the Sydney teams. Like you're sending Melbourne to Perth and Perth to Melbourne, Melbourne to Townsville, Townsville to like the Cowboys to, to Melbourne. All those teams go across to New Zealand and then New Zealand, I mean, they still do it anyway, but come across um, to Australia every second week whilst the Sydney teams don't have to do that every year. Um, even like a team like Newcastle, who's only two hours away from Sydney, have to travel up to Queensland four times throughout the year where a Sydney-based team might have to, but they might have to only do it once. Like, it's yeah, sort of... I don't know how fair that is um, in that sense. So, yeah, you'd have to do a little bit of, not nitpicking, but working around that to make sure that is fair across the whole competition. But essentially, like, I really do like the idea of a conference system and a tier system within the NRL Let's get into the part that everyone wants to hear about this week, and that is that the football is back. Um, we're going to Vegas, baby. Uh, let's talk about the team list. Um, Cody Walker got named at six. I thought for all money he was out until like round three or four. And it's funny, usually at the start of the year, there's a guy that's like 50-50 whether he's going to play or not, especially at the start of the year, they don't play him. They just go, no, nah, it's a long season. Just stick it out so we don't lose you for six months. However, I think the Vegas factor might play a little bit of a part with it for Cody Walker. Uh, obviously, he's one of the game's best players, especially in his position. He wants to be there. He wants to put on a show. He wants to have fun and play some good rugby league in Vegas. There's no way he wasn't going to go over. So I think that might be a contributing factor to why he's being picked. But obviously, it's probably... We'll talk about it a little bit later. But I think it gives the Bunnies a lot better chance in this game. Um, outside backs for the Rabbitohs. Obviously, they've had a lot of injuries and unavailabilities because like White suspended and whatnot. But Richard Kenner is playing in the centres in round one. All respect to him. He did look good in the trial against the Dragons. So maybe like he sort of got picked on trial form. It was like tossing up between him and someone else. But congratulations to Jacob Gagai, who will be making his NRL debut at 28. That's huge from him. Um, just... A uh, good lesson in perseverance, and like obviously a lot of hard work goes into becoming an NRL player, especially when you're seeing your older brother go off and do the things that he's done in his career. It could be a little bit dejecting at times, but he's uh, stuck to his to his guns, and he's making his NRL debut. So congratulations to Jacob Gagai. That's awesome. Feel good rugby league story. More interesting things in the Rabbitohs lineup is that Jai Arrow will be starting on the edge for the Rabbitohs, um, and I believe Talis Duncan is not named. So Probably big minutes for him. Exciting if you're a super coach player and have him in your team because I don't believe he's that expensive. I might be switching him in uh, to my team looking at that, to be honest. Um, I'll just have a quick look and just refresh my mind of who's on the bench for the Rabbitohs. But like, their full pack looks nuts, to be honest. And it's not even full strength, I believe. Um, I feel like they still have a couple of players out um, here and there. Yes, on the bench for the Rabbits, you've got Savili Havili in the... <laughs> Saliva Havili, sorry, in the 14. Jacob Host in the 15. So you still got a second row on the bench. Mawali and Tom Burgess. Man, I would have liked to see Talis Duncan there, to be honest. Um, 
Jao on the right edge, poor old Keon Kalom Tungy in the world most decoyed spot on the left edge as a bunny second rower. But I guess like it sort of gives you a bit of versatility there because you could push Cameron Murray onto an edge and so he's still out in the field, doesn't have to come off for a breather. Um, obviously, like you still have to work pretty hard on an edge, um, but still, it's a lot less um, work, load, work load, work rate than playing in the middle. It's a 13. Uh, for Manly, some cool stuff that's going on there is that Jackson Polo got the starting spot on the wing. There's obviously a vacant outside, um, outside back spot at Manly. Not necessarily the wing or the center, but Ruben Garrick is playing centers, which does excite me. Uh, gets his hands a bit closer to the ball. I think he's a really, really good winger, though. Good out of um, like the red zone in yardage. Good finisher, really athletic, good goal kicker. I mean, not that it's really affected playing center. His defense might come into question a little bit, and his ball playing, too, because, I mean, when was the last time we saw Ruben Garrick really draw a pass for a whole game? Played a bit of centers last year. Did, did kill I think I just feel like the more he matures into the NRL, the closer he's going to get to the ball. Um, Whether, yeah. Very, very talented player at Ruben Gary. He's got a lot of outside backs, though, at Manly. A lot of, like, so you've still got um, Tommy Talau, not there, not named. Um, so I guess that's also the advantage for Manly, is that you can sort of pick and prod and choose and see how combinations go. Not great to do it in the actual season, but look, it is what it is. Um, they only really got one, essentially one trial with their full squad because of the fact they were going over to Vegas. So, see how it all plays out there. Luke Brooks making his club debut for Manly. Awesome to see. I reckon he's going to kill it this year, hey? Like, really, really do. I just think in that new situation, like, you're, you see him, he looks so much happier, new lease on life, and I think he's just going to have the confidence just to play his footy because DCE is going to do all the, all the organising work. He's going to be, Brooksy, just do what you want, play footy. Go have a run around. Go put this person through a hole. Go just basically have fun. And um, I think that's really what Brooks needs at his at this stage of his career, rather. So I'm really excited to see how he goes. The other exciting pick for Manly is that Burbo is on the edge. Maybe I'm just looking at this from a super coach standpoint because he's cheap as and we're probably playing close to 60, 70, 80 minutes. But he looks so much more filled out, like a man confident in contact, strong, breaking tackles. Like He looks like everything that we've sort of heard about him, how good he is coming through the grades and that sort of thing. We haven't really seen it so far in the NRL. Yes, he's had some issues with injury and whatnot, but I'm really excited to see how he goes. Um, just for the first six weeks of the comp, really, I feel like it's not like... Yes, there's competitions for spots you know, at Manly. There's John and Edge. You've even got Brad Parker playing second row these days. But I think... <laughs> I'm pretty sure Burbo and Schuster are pretty good mates because they played um, in the grades together coming through. But competition for spots is always a good thing and I feel like it's brought the best out of Ben Jaboyevich. now moving on to the Broncos Roosters game exciting selections is that Dean Mariner made the wing spot which we all thought that Corey Oates was going to get Corey Jensen starting and Fletcher Baker has made the bench otherwise that Broncos side looks pretty good pretty stacked as well as the Roosters side does uh, Spencer Lenu is starting I feel like Rhea Hargraves is suspended, which allows room for Spencer Lenu to start. And if he impresses, I can't see why he wouldn't keep continuing to start there. Yes, Rhea Hargraves has for a long time, but he is aging. He's the second oldest, you know, the oldest player left in the competition. So Spencer Lenu, still a young, wiry prop. Why not give him the starting uh, starting role there? The back row selections were interesting. Satili so Tupanua and Siwa Wong. Satili so Tupanua, who played a handful of games last season, after injuring his ACL, and C.Y. Wong, who's played a handful of games in his career, being picked over guys like Egan Butcher, who killed it last year, and Angus Crichton, who we've seen play for the Blues and play a pretty good clip for the Roosters before. Now, the interesting admission was Connor Watson, but I guess that does make sense to me because he had a, a fair injury and then went to the Roosters, and then he did his patella tendon, and that's just such an awful recovery. So I can get where I want to ease him into football a little bit more, get some more minutes and reps under the belt. And Sanders Smith did play pretty good for the Roosters last year, so I feel like he was rewarded for that with the bench spot. But let's talk about who I think is going to win these games. Manly versus the Rabbitohs. I'm going the Bunnies. Yes, that edge with Richard Kennett and Gagai does scare me a little bit, they probably will be broken up, I imagine. But Cody Walker being there excites me. And geez, that four pack's just so good. Do Manly have the personnel to go with them? Absolutely. But I do think that the uh, Rabbitohs have a better four pack. And 
at Vegas with a smaller field and stuff. That's going to be imperative. I think Cameron Murray has a huge game, and the Rabbitohs go on to win that one. Then we got Roosters taking on the Broncos. I'm going to tip the underdog here. I'm going the Roosters. Um, again, I just think their team... <sighs> I haven't... I mean, the last couple of years have started slow. I think the spine are all used to playing together now. So that's going to help them in terms of gelling early. The squad's been together for a few years now. The four pack again is insane. So is the Broncos though. So is the Broncos. I uh, I, th I think it might honestly just be vibe. Uh, if that's the feeling I get. But the Roosters, as well as the Broncos, both have something to prove. But the Roosters more so. Like they've been nearly competition favourites the last two years, just given their squad. And they haven't lived up to expectations. And then this year, everyone's off them because of what's happened the last two years, which is fair enough. But because everyone's off them is why I feel like they're going to go good because everyone's like, ah, oh, no, nah, the Roosters, they've got a good team, but they don't put it together, rah, rah, rah. And I feel like this year might be the year they do it. So, yeah, that's my tips for this round. Bunnies and the Chooks. Now, we'll get into your questions that you've asked me through this week through the Instagram stories. So if you want to get involved in the questions and you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you go over and do that so that next week you have the chance to be featured. First off, we've got like sort of a dual question here, but from Eden.Sudo, he said, if the Dragons were in the competition, who would I support? Um, most people will probably end up disliking me after I say this, but it'd be Manly. And you ask why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because my old man is a Manly fan. So naturally, I feel like if I wasn't a Dragon supporter, I would be a Manly fan. It would have been funneled into that as a youngster. Um, and then the second like the second half, I guess, of that question is from Jake underscore Allen, 2002. And he said, how long have I supported the Dragons? And that answer to that question is, I think, since Jake Allen was born, probably 2002. Um, as long as I can remember, I've been a Dragons fan. Very fond memories um, as a youngster going and watching... The Dragons at Wynn Stadium on like a Friday night when they had like the absolutely ridiculous team. But even before that, I used to remember just like loving Ashton Sims um, and like that era of team at the Dragons. Uh, yeah, just for as long as I can remember, I've been an absolute diehard for the Dragons, unfortunately for me, because uh, there's been some tough times. But I've also seen my team win a comp, so we, you take that, really. Um, so, Lock Marsh with two H's asks, uh, if I was to add another team to the NRL, who would it be and where? Great question. It's very much in the news at the moment. I think the obvious answer is the Perth Bears. Um, I think it's still a National Rugby League. I understand why they want to expand it to PNG or Pacifica and stuff, but we're a National Rugby League. Not Look, I got, I'm all for more teams um, I think there is a market over in Perth uh, the Bears as well already do have members and you, you can't add another Sydney team so I feel like if they were going to bring him back North Sydney might get two or three games a season but yeah I feel like even like the Western Bears or something so play up and down the um, Western Australian um, coast or some, oh, it's tough because you've got to go to where there's marketability and profit for the NRL. The other thing that I sort of worry about is the travel factor of getting teams over there and people wanting to go play over there. But that's just sort of the issue with PNG team and a Pacifica team. Are these guys going to go over, like want to go and play for that team? Um, we had trouble enough getting people to go for the Dolphins first year and that's in Brisbane. So that's what's going to be interesting for me. Because um, you put it into perspective, like yes, the Warriors have to do a lot of travel, but the flight from New Zealand to Sydney is quicker than... Perth to Sydney, so something that we have to and the NRL have to consider within bringing an 18th team in the competition, but you've asked me what team would I bring into the competition and why, and it would be the Perth Bears because uh, I feel like the game needs to expand over to the western side of the country, not just the east coast of Australia, and the Bears already have a fan base and a support system and uh, a lot of money, which definitely will go into consideration for Peter Belandis and Andrew Abdo. Um, Dry Bull, who is has been around for a while, a uh, big fan and a massive Bulldogs fan, which I'm going to say before I say this. He says, Dogs, Wooden Spoon, Lock It In, Eddie. The old trial over reaction, eh, Jai? Nah, so... Ugh. I don't know. I don't know where I feel about the Bulldogs. I want to see him play a few rounds in the competition first. Like, that first week, I was like... That first trial, I was like, okay... I see it. I see what's building. I see what's happening. The doggies 
could be competitive this year. And then the trial against the Sharks, they were just sloppy. Um, I think both teams came out of that going, ooh, okay, we got some work to do. Uh, but there's definitely shining lights and good signs for the Bulldogs. Concerning signs as well is that I feel like Haywood looked better than Reed Marnie at number nine. And like, Reed Marnie looks a bit out of form. He'll probably pick it up as the season goes on. But uh, I reckon Haywood is looking, knock, knocking on the door there and we'll get a chance in the NRL this year. Sam Hughes was awesome. Exactly what the squad needs as well. So happy, like, Dogs never win in the comp this year. I know if you're a Winston Neville fan and a Doggies fan, you've seen that you win in the comp this year. Rah, 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 rah. It's never going to happen. Um, I don't think anyone actually truly believes it. But it's another building year. You're not, not worried about making the finals this year next year. It's 26, 27, 28. When all these Jersey flag guys come through and you've still got Stephen Crichton, who's 23, by the way. Matt Burton, who's like 25. Reed Marnie, who's like 25. Like they've, The team's got time. As a uh, young Dan and Kemp says, uh, stay patient, Doggies fans. We'll move on to what Tyrese underscore Dunning has asked. And he said, who is my Australian fullback for future tests? Now, this is tough. If you think about who, like, the selections you got. Tedesco's obviously the incumbent, but you got Reese Walsh, Tommy Turbo, Latrell Mitchell. Uh, you've also got a guy like Gutho. There's someone else I'm missing. Oh, Dylan Edwards. Yeah, that guy's won three comps in a row and a Clive Churchill. Yeah, him. Um, it's tough, man. I guess you got to see what happens with form and whatnot, but I think, I don't know. The Australian team is a bit different to, like, an origin where you sort of want to think about the now and the future. So, like, for origin, if this, like, let's just say all these players were eligible for the same origin team, you'd probably be looking at Reese Walsh because he's killing it and he's, like, 21. He's got so much time and he can be there for the next 10 years. The Australian team doesn't really have that kind of aura I guess around it it's just like whoever's playing the best at towards the end of the season um, and I guess who's been there and done it before like Tedesco if he's in form at the end of the season you pick him um, Dylan Edwards could do a job there Reese Walsh oh Caelan Ponga that guy as well he could probably play that I, has Caelan Ponga even played for Australia Caelan Ponga he's my, he's my pick there you go <laughs> um, and then the last question before we round out this week's uh, podcast is from Jensen Soper 09 and he says thoughts on Kayla Ponga's Newcastle Knights in 2024 I really like them I really really like them I feel like all the players have bought in heading in towards 2024 um, they all want to like all the players want to compound off last season they, no one wants to sit in their laurels and go that was awesome and not work um, any harder and any further towards um, a really good season in 2024 there's a lot of competition for spots there as well like rumours have it that Will Price is going to play centre so Dan Gagai can go onto the wing that's how competitive and strong the squad is um, you've got second row is coming out the wazoo there like they lost, lost Lachlan Fitzgibbon and have better second row depth this year that's how nuts that squad is Caelan Ponga leading uh, the team through his actions and uh, his skill and his like just persona you've got halves coming out everywhere like you could honestly have four or five halves combinations there and each one you can go yeah I see it um, I'm actually really excited about the Knights this season it'll be interesting to see how they go if they suffer a couple tough losses in a row how the morale goes then um, but yeah man the Knights are, they could be on for an absolute all time run and like they were awesome last year and knew we got around them but I still feel like they're underrated in terms of the competition. Like, no one wants to go to Newcastle and play there, especially when the crowd is like the way it was. I went up there and watched the Knights versus the Sharks last year. And I feel like the Knights went into halftime down and the, the crowd got them home. Absolutely, they got them home. And that was the game that Caelan Ponga did his AC joint. And he went off and they still got the job done. So, yeah, Newcastle Knights are certainly a team that no one wants to play. Um, and they're going to be tough to beat, if that makes sense. So that wraps up another week of the Trademark Sports Podcast. Thank you guys if you've made it this far for listening. Thank you if you've been listening at all. Honestly, I appreciate it so, so much. We're into the footy season now, so let's get hyped. Get around it. Um, if you made it this far to the podcast and you're on YouTube, comment Vegas, baby. Um, if you are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star rating if you haven't already. Um, and I make sure you download the episode to help us out there. And we will see you next week for another episode. Don't forget to, uh, Scotty, drink your water, and Bradman, do your best.